Don't be logged in. Hi, we're the UT Physics Circus. I'm Jordan. I'm Jackie. Thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about air pressure. And so air is all around us, but can, if you just be quiet for a moment and close your eyes, can you feel it pressing against you? Can, it feel, can you feel it pushing down on your shoulders? I can't. It's crushing. Maybe Jackie can, <laughs> but I can't. And the reason is because we're all used to it. We're adapted to living in an environment with air pressure, just like deep sea fish are adapted to living in the high pressures of underwater life. And so, we suggested to your teachers or your parents some uh, materials you can use to do a demo at home of air pressure. So we're going to start with this leaf blower. <laughs> this tiny little leaf blower that some people call hair dryers. <laughs> uh, we're going to turn it on. And with, this ping and with this ping pong ball, I'm just going to hold it above the, leaf, the hair dryer. So it's not surprising that the hairdryer pushes the ping pong ball up, but it might be a little surprising that it levitates it. And so we'll talk more about why that happens later. And so if this hairdryer can push the ping pong ball up about to here, I have an idea. Let's use our funnel, and this funnel will concentrate all the air and really blow it up out of the top, right? Yeah, it should definitely just, it should just go everywhere. All right, this, this ought to go really high. It is in there. It just wasn't doing anything. Well, I really thought it would shoot it out of the funnel. Yeah, and if you were doing this at home, you'll notice that the ping pong ball didn't even really lift off of the bottom. And this is due to something called Bernoulli's principle. And the first thing we need to understand is that air wants to go from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. And the second thing is that fast moving air is low pressure. So, when I blow this hair dryer in through the bottom, what's happening is that this funnel is creating an area of low pressure. The fast air coming up through the bottom is all low pressure air. And the high pressure air from outside is pushing the ping pong ball down. And so even though we thought that concentrating the air might blow it up out of the top, all we've really done is make a low pressure area. And so, Jackie, what's a way we could explore more about low pressure areas? Did we bring anything that would be useful today? I think we could try to levitate a larger ball. Ooh, that's a good idea. What if we, what if we float this? Do you think we could use the hair dryer to make this float? Yeah, and so for this, here's my idea. I'm going to blow the air over the top of the ball. Okay. That'll make a low pressure area, and then the high pressure air underneath will push up because it wants to move into the low pressure area. That, and that should levitate the ball. That makes sense. It should work. Okay, ready? Okay. Well, that didn't work at all. Huh. Okay, here, try and hold it. Mm. Let's try it again. Okay. That's not working at all. What? Huh. I think we need more air. Hold this. Okay. I think this could give us some more air. Ah, that's a good idea. All right. Ready? Ready. Ready. Why wasn't it working with this ball um, with the hair dryer? I think the hair dryer just didn't, it wasn't enough, mm -hmm. of a, enough of a stream of low pressure to get all of the air in this room to really help us hold that ball up. I see. So we needed even faster air that would be at even lower pressure to generate enough exactly. lift. Exactly. There wasn't enough air coming from our small leaf blower, so we had to use the large leaf blower. 
Um, and Bernoulli's principle of high pressure air wanting to move to low pressure areas is actually what makes airplane wings work. So we learned that the high pressure air was able to keep the ping pong ball inside the funnel. It was also able to help us levitate the giant ball. So do you feel like the atmospheric pressure is weighing you down? No, we don't feel it. We're used to it and we've lived in it our whole lives. But what could we simulate that we aren't used to that could help us demonstrate air pressure? Well, I've never felt what it's like to not have any air pressure, like the vacuum of space. That's a good thought. We could simulate the vacuum of space, but we wouldn't be able to breathe. Oh, okay. Maybe not a great experiment to do today. Well, we do have this tiny vacuum chamber that can simulate the pressures of space. Do you guys want to... So, we could take all the air out of this room, but then we wouldn't be able to breathe. So I brought this so we could take all the air out of here without, you know, suffocating us. So... This is a half-inflated balloon. Oh, this is a half-inflated balloon, as you can tell. There's plenty of room for it to continue to be inflated. And if I put this half-inflated balloon inside of this vacuum chamber, what do you guys think is going to happen? Well, as scientists, we can do an experiment and find out. It looks like the balloon is getting bigger. Do you guys see the balloon's getting huge? So Jackie, is, is it filling with more air? Where's the air coming from? No, it's not filling with more air. How do I open this? This. Oh. My fancy air containment device. So now you're going to let the air back in? So now I'm letting air back into the chamber, and we see the balloon is decreasing again, going back to its original size. So what happened? I didn't, I didn't inflate the balloon while it was in there. I took the air out. How could this have gotten bigger? And so when I take the air out of here, there is no air pressure. There's nothing keeping that original gas contained to its size, and it's allowed to expand and expand until it wants to. So, if I were in that low pressure room, would I continue to expand and expand and get bigger because there's no air pressure pushing me in? Well, and then just go back to your normal size? Yeah, can, can well, I try it? I don't, I, I don't know, I don't think we can fit you in there. We can, we can try with a little uh, something that can simulate you. Oh, our volunteer. Yes, this is our astronaut Marshmallow, and he will be... Um, demonstrating y'all what it's like to be in the vacuum of space. So, because we can't, we can't put you in there. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just see what happens to our little space cadet. Let me tighten this back up. Turn on the vacuum. When I turn this on, it starts taking all of the air out of this room. Oh, do you guys see that? He's getting huge. This seems like an easy way to make more marshmallows to eat. Let's let the air back in. All right. So as I let the air back in, uh, he... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, he's getting smaller and more wrinkly than before. Uh-oh. Well, now he doesn't look work. like... Uh such a talented, promising astronaut. Anymore. I wouldn't really want to eat those marshmallows. So what happened? So the marshmallows, what makes them so good are those tiny air pockets all throughout marshmallows, makes them nice and fluffy. When we uh, put him into our vacuum chamber, those air pockets start to expand and expand and expand, but it's not made of the same material as our balloon, and those air pockets pop. They reach their limit and pop. And then when we put the air back in, there's nowhere for the air to go back into, and it's just this wrinkled, sad marshmallows. They don't look very appetizing, and poor, poor guy, he gave his life to science. All his little pockets of air are now deflated. That's pretty impressive that just the air 
from that atmosphere was able to crush him into this wrinkly shape. And so I have a question. Jackie, do you think you're stronger than air? I think I'm pretty strong, and I've been lifting weights in quarantine. Oh, yeah? Well, I bet you can't push the air in front of your face away from you. Air pressure is really strong. Oh. Well, you did it. <laughs> I am not, not really. It's, it's, it's definitely still there, right? Well, you did push air, though, but I, I have a demonstration that I think could prove that you're not actually stronger than air pressure. Okay, prove it. These, this is what we call a sphere, mostly. It's sphere-shaped. And when you split it in half, it's a hemisphere. And there's nothing keeping these two halves connected together. And so what's happening with this hemisphere is that there's air on the inside pushing out, and there's air on the outside pushing in. They're exactly balanced, so I can move them apart and together again, no problem. technical difficulties. Yeah, I think we lost you for a little bit there, but we're going to try to do a demonstration now to show whether or not we're stronger than air pressure. And so this round shape is what we call a sphere. And if we split it in half, these are each called hemispheres, half of the sphere. And so there's nothing connecting these two hemispheres together. And in this normal state, there's air on the inside that's pushing out and there's air on the outside that's pushing in. And they're exactly balanced, so it's easy to pull them apart or put them back together again. And so for the experiment I want to do, I want to take all of the air outside, uh, we're going to take all the air that's inside of here and take it all out. So there will be no air inside, nothing pushing out, and only air pressure pushing in. Okay. That way we'll be able to see if there's this air pressure pushing in, are we stronger than that air pressure? And can we forcibly pull these two halves apart? OK. So right now, there's air pushing out and air pushing in. But now I'm sucking all the air on the inside. Okay, that should be that enough. sounds about right. And let's see if I'm stronger than air. Oh, man, I thought he could do this. Oh, well, there's a lot of air pressure pushing on the outside of this Here, thing. Here, let's get us both, we're both. If we both contribute, we can probably get it. Okay. All right, Jackie, try plan B. Oh. Whew. Okay, did, oh, we I pull, did, it. did we pull it apart fairly? Yeah! <laughs> no, no, I, I did cheat a little there. I really, I, I didn't like that the air was stronger than me, and I just, I had to, I had to be able to pull those apart. And so what did you do? Well, I turned this lever here, and that let all the air back into the inside of the sphere, and I just figured that would be how we could pull it apart. If there's no air inside there, all the air on the outside is just pushing on the sphere. That's amazing that... Even though air is invisible, it was strong enough to push these two hemispheres together. And we weren't strong enough to pull it apart, but the air inside that we let back in, it was strong enough to push them apart. So we really are not stronger than air. I guess air is stronger than me. 
And in fact, we did a little bit of calculations, because that's what we physicists do. And we determined that it, it would have taken 700 pounds of force to pull these two hemispheres apart when there was no air inside. Yeah, that's a lot. I wouldn't have been able to do that. Well, yeah. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. That's our show today. Um, if anyone has any questions they'd like to um, send us, we'd be happy to answer any questions you want to send our way. Yeah, you can actually type questions in the Zoom chat, and we have someone behind the computer, and if we get any questions, we'll try our best to answer them. And while we're waiting for questions, I want to tell you about a demo that actually didn't work, okay, that we yes, thought please. was going to work. So Bernoulli's principle, as we determined, makes a low pressure area inside the funnel, and the high pressure air tries to push it, the ping pong ball back down. And if you had a strong enough hair dryer, you could actually blow in air at the bottom and turn the funnel upside down, and the ping pong ball would still stick to the top. Because all the air pressure in the air would just lift it up into the funnel? Yeah, it's the same principle we've been using all throughout all these experiments, that air wants to go from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. Well, could we get it to work with the blow with the leaf blower? Let's check to see if we have any questions. <laughs> we don't, and no. so let's try our next experiment. Okay, let's try with the leaf blower. Okay. You hold the funnel. And turn it on. Okay. And actually, before you turn it on, I'm just going to hold it right above here and try and use my hand to try to get as much as air as I can through there. Okay. Okay, ready? Uh, keep it on the wall. Oh. Good idea, Jack. We just needed more air, and for a little bit, the ping pong ball was floating there and not falling out of the bottom. I think your hands just aren't very precise air containment devices. It wasn't able to have all the air go straight into that funnel. But that's the great thing about science, that even if we don't get it to work the same time, we can, the first time, we can continue to test our hypotheses and improve our knowledge and improve our equipment and get it working eventually. We don't have to get it right the very first time. Right, just because we didn't get it right this time doesn't mean it won't happen. All right, we'll test, check one more time for any questions. No. All right. All right, well, thanks for tuning in with us, guys. Uh, we're the UT Physics Circus, and we will see you next time.